Amen. So we're having a great time talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm so charged up about it because um, I believe that there's a lot of hidden treasures in it. What happens to many people is that they don't maximize the things God has given them. God is so interesting. Uh, you know, let me tell you something. Let me just quickly tell you something. Eh? If, 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 if your life is not going the way you want, eh? if you're going to find people to blame, the only person you can't blame is God. You can blame yourself. You can even blame Satan. You can lie on him because he's always lying on people anyway. He's, he's okay. You can lie on Satan. You can say it's even your enemies in the village. It's fine. You can say it's your mother and father. The only, there's only one person you can never blame. That person is God. Because he's always on your side and he has given you all the arsenal, all the equipment you need to win in this life. He has given you all. All. So that is what the, that's part of what the baptism of the Holy Ghost is. It's part of the equipment God has given us to live successfully on this earth. If you are not tapping into it, then that is your fault. If you are not tapping into it, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a.k.a. praying in tongues, a.k.a. praying in the Spirit. Somebody get what I'm saying? There's too much benefit. Too much. So today I'm going to talk about the benefits and next Sunday I'll deal with the misconceptions. Like I said, what is stopping many people from it is the different wrong misconceptions that they have, you know, that they have about it. So I'm going to deal with misconceptions next Sunday. I'm going to deal with the benefits this Sunday. Let's go quickly because I have about seven. There are, there are over 40 benefits of praying the Holy Ghost, but I'm going to deal with only seven, all right, in the course of this teaching. I'm, I'm going to try and stay with the seven ones that I, I find very important, all right? They, are, they, they might be more. They are more usually. But I'm going to do with seven. So let's go quickly. Number one. Number one benefit of praying in the Holy Ghost is that you'll be able to pray effectively. Effective praying. You can write it like that. Effective praying. Guys, without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, without praying in tongues, without praying in the Spirit, you can never pray effectively. You will always pray in the dark. You will always pray guesswork if you're only praying with your understanding. There are too many issues that will arise in this life that there's no other way you can handle it but by praying in tongues. There's no other way. If not, you'll be shooting, you'll be shooting, you know, a miss. You'll be praying and miss a lot of times. There are many Christians, their prayer life is just full of guesswork, full of praying and miss. They never are able to pray effectively because they are always in the dark as regards what and how to pray for. And it's not your fault, it's normal with all humans. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Let's go quickly, guys. I have the whole seven points, so I want to be as fast as I can. Romans 8, 26. DJ, quickly. I want us to read together. Everybody want to go. Our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. See the next verse, 27. 27. It says, and what? He that searched the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. Did you see this? Did you see this? Those two verses are simply saying, you as a natural human being, you can never know how you should pray for things the way you ought to. But they say there's somebody that knows, that can search the heart of God, that knows what the will of God is, and our prayers are only answered when we pray according to what? The will of God. I hope you know that one. Do I need to show you? Let me show you. Somebody that has not seen it before. DJ, bring it up. The Bible says, it's only when we pray according to his will that he hears us. So, some people think God can answer any prayer. Just talk to him anyhow. Woo! <laughs> it's not that not in the Bible, sir. God is very restricted to prayers he can answer. I get what I'm saying. I don't know. I get what I'm saying. There are people that believe, just pray anyhow. Cry to him. See your mind. People just say nonsense that I don't know in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Let me show you. Look, look at it. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to what? His will. That's when what? He hears us. He doesn't just say, oh God, kill uh, John and go answer it. Because he answers all prayers. Are you joking me? Are you kidding me right now? Of course he doesn't answer any prayer. It's obvious. He only answers prayers 
that are in line with his will. And there's no way you can ever know his will in all situations. Sometimes they want to sack you. You are praying to stay in the job. God is saying, I need to sack you from here. Oh, somebody's not getting what I'm saying. If you're only praying understanding, some of you are praying to hold on to something God is trying to deliver you from. But like Jesus is not marrying you again. You are crying. Say, oh God, turn his heart. God say, ah, he wants to turn your destiny. He, I'm trying, is the deliverance I'm doing for you. But you are praying understanding. Oh God, I don't want to let him go. God say, you, lay. you better let him go. There's someone ahead for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So praying only in understanding limits you. Too many things you are praying for. That, that you, are, you, are, you are praying and miss, you are missing it. It's not in line with what God has in mind. And God is not committed to that kind of prayer. He said, the, the, we, 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 we don't know how we should pray as we ought. He said, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. The word infirmity there means weaknesses. Our shortcomings, actually. Our shortcomings in prayer. Because we are limited in knowledge. We are limited in understanding. We are limited in what's going to happen in the future. He said, but the Holy Ghost comes because he already knows what's in the mind of God. He comes and helps us to pray. Hallelujah. So, when you pray in tongues, you have 100% accuracy in prayer because you're not, you're not praying from your head. You're praying from your spirit. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Effective prayer. Effective prayer. Mande soko babradisa. Jebra de kazuta babarisa. Limbro do soko talabasika. There are a few times when you have clarity in prayer. That one you can pray in English, but there are many times. In fact, most of the time, we don't have clarity in the prayer. And we need to pray in the Holy Ghost till the Holy Ghost gives us clarity. What actually happens when I pray over an issue? I first pray in tongues a lot. As I'm praying in tongues, then the Holy Ghost tells me now, address this, address this. That way, I'm not just shooting randomly. I'm inspired to now say, hey, maybe, Satan will tell me, maybe God will tell me, this issue is Satan stopping it. And as I'm praying in tongues, it comes to me as a question, and I take one minute and say, hey, Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus, remove your hand. And that's it. But some people just shoot randomly. Oh God, if it's Satan driving. Oh God, if it's my uncle in the village, stop him. Oh God, if it's the economy, help it. Oh God. It... This, is what, this, is, this is what some people do. <laughs> this is what some people do. And those things don't get results. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Faith doesn't work like that. Many of you are struggling right now because you never pray effectively. You're always praying guesswork prayer, always praying in English. So if you are even praying rehearsed prayer, that has nothing to do with your life today. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Lord, thy, thy kingdom. You don't even know what you're saying. You, you, that was a template they gave us. You, you're not supposed to be just repeating the prayer without your mind being there. You just repeat it. So if you think this is charm, you think it's, it's jazz we are doing. Think it's incantation. Just saying without thinking. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the of Jesus. <laughs> you have crammed everything. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me. That one is not even a prayer at all. Psalm 23 is not a prayer at all. It's a statement of fact that if God is your shepherd, you will not want. And they began to describe the benefits of having him as there's no prayer inside that thing. The Lord, my child, I shall know what you make me to love. Yay! Though I walk through the shadow, <laughs> tell your neighbor, grow up, grow up, grow up. <laughs> Hallelujah! It was God Himself that gave us the ability to pray in tongues. It wasn't man that created it. You can't be wiser than God now. I don't know how people advise God. I don't even know how people do it. Some people are very rude. There are people that even come to me for counseling. They are counseling me. They say, Pastor, this is what should I do? I'm telling them, they say, no, Pastor, this is what I think. So you know what to do. And you're wasting my time. They are people that come with me. They ask me, they tell me their situation. And I begin to ask them questions. I say, how old are you? And what do you do? And the person will say, hmm, all these questions. Why are you asking me? I say, are you the counselor? I'm the counselor. What do you mean? I know why I'm asking you. I mean, just shut up and listen. Or don't waste my time. My time is precious. But they don't, they don't know that. So there are people like that. They want to always debate with God. God said you need to pray in tongues. Say no. Why? Are you okay? Your whole brain, they made it with sand and mud. Hope you know. Your whole brain disturbing you. They mixed it like this with mud. It's mud and water. And you are contesting with the almighty God that made the heavens and the earth. This whole world, he holds it like this. And you are asking him to do pray. Something he said you need. You say you don't need. He's the one that said, I didn't, I, didn't write, I didn't write Bible, I was even there when they wrote it. He's the one that said, you every Christian, these are the signs that follow them that believe. I wasn't there. 
You need it. It's the reason behind the love the struggles you have. Your husband is misbehaving. How do you know what the cause of the problem is? Oh God, any side chick. Sometimes not a side chick. It's a side. <laughs> it's side problems. Sometimes it's just Arsenal not signing any important player <laughs> for the new season. That's all troubling him. That's all. Everybody's buying player now. Arsenal is not buying any. They are going to secondary schools now. That's what they are doing. That might be all worrying him, but you are praying. Oh God, any side chick? Any, there's no side chick. But you are in the dark. So there are many issues. There are many times. All you need to do is <laughs> praise God. All you need to do is to pray in the Holy Ghost. Man, the labels until the Holy Ghost gives inspiration what to pray, or He just prays through you like that. Effective praying can only happen when you pray in the Holy Ghost. There are many times um, I've been in danger, and my wife just prayed. She just had a burden to pray for me. She didn't know what was going on. You see, you see, if you don't pray in tongues, God can't use you in those dimensions. Your son might be going on. Maybe you might even be your kids. You just have a trouble feeling about your kids. Okay, what will you pray? You don't even know what's going to happen. Maybe somebody's about to hit them down. Maybe something's about to happen to them in their school. Maybe something's about to happen. You know, you don't know. But God, the Holy Ghost just inspires you. Hey, pray for your husband now. Pray for your kids now. Pray for your parents now. Okay, how will you start praying? What will you say? Oh God, I don't know what. <laughs> Father Lord God Jesus. Father Lord God Jehovah. You don't know what's about to happen. But if you pray in the Holy Ghost, once the burden for prayer comes on you for anybody, you can start praying the Holy Ghost for the person. Man, so kabala. Because you don't know what's going to happen. There, there's a time I told you, sorry, when I went to Kotonu, I wanted to, to buy a car for one of my Ashet pastors. So I went with them. So when we, when we crossed there, nearly we crossed, there was a fight between Nigerians and, and, and people from Benin. There was a big fight. And me and the person that I went were very fair. Those of you that know Obi, you know him. We were very fair. We were yellow. There's no way they won't know we are Nigerians. As in they were beating people oh, we in our presence. They would use plank like this and plank Nigerians. Bah! But at, a, at that exact time, my wife said she had a burden to just pray for me. She didn't know why. And she began to pray in tongues, you see. Because she wouldn't know what was going on. And guess what? In all that fighting, somebody just told us, follow me. One of the guys there, follow me. And he just took us like this. And nobody spoke to us. Nobody talked to us. He just carried us into a safe house. And we hid there for until the fight settled down. We passed through everybody. They didn't touch us. No, they were planting people in our presence. Somebody get what I'm saying? And she, we, we've had that experience because me, I'm always walking about. We've had that <laughs> We've had that experience many times. Many times. There are too many things that can happen to you and your family. So of you, you, you want to pray about your day. You have a burden in your heart about that day. How are you going to pray? You don't know whether it's accident or you don't know that it's, 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 it's plane that's going to fall from the sky. You don't know what's going to happen. So how will you start praying? When a body clarity comes, you just pray in the Holy Ghost till you get clarity. Effective praying. You pray till you get peace. Till you get direction. Effective praying happens when you pray in the Holy Ghost. So you are too limited. If you only pray this, I have other, you you, you God, you just, just, just mumble many things, repeat yourself hundred times because you don't have clarity. Somebody get what I'm saying? Effective praying. There are too many things flying around that you can never fully comprehend. You can't wait to know everything before you pray. Hallelujah. Hmm. So, um, on, on that thing it does, b b effective brain, when, have you ever been in the God's presence and you begin to lack words to express yourself? This, 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 that's why he gave us a spiritual language. Remember, God is a what? Spirit. God is a spirit. So, God's first language is not English. Ah, somebody needs to understand this one. God's first language is not English. I hope you know the Bible wasn't even written in English. Because people don't know. They think English. Thou shalt. Because in their mind, they are hearing God's voice. You know, some people when they read that King James, they think this is how God, God is just talking directly. Thou shalt come thou from whence. Because some people just think this must be God. This is how God sounds. No, not at all. It was King James. This was, this was how people were speaking English at the time. It had nothing to do with God. The Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek. Do you understand this? <laughs> so, 
all these um, human languages, none of them are God's language. The first and principal language of God is a spiritual language because God is a word spirit. So he wanted to upgrade your speech. He said, if I leave you in English, you'll be too limited to communicate some things. So I want to upgrade you to spiritual language. Hey, I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. So I want to upgrade you so that we can talk at some level where English can't pass. Do you know there are even some, there are, there are some languages that are more, that, that, that they, they borrowed, English borrowed from. Latin and French and some other languages, they are senior to English. So there are some words, if, let's even use Greek, there are some words in Greek that they don't have in English. In English, every word love is love. I love football, I love my wife, I love my children, the same word. In Greek, all those word love are different. So even Greek alone is even better than English. In expression. So how much more spiritual language? There are, there are times you need to talk to God. There's no way to express yourself except in tongues. Because there are not enough English words. How do you, how do you even explain and express how big God is? In a normal language. With your mind that they use more to mix. That mind wants to worship the mixer. Of the mud. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. I don't know. People that made this phone, this phone can never truly be able to express the greatness of the maker. Because it's, he, he, the phone itself is just a small, very small part of the maker. So your English is going to be small to express how great God is. That's why many times when you are in worship, when you are in praise, you need to enter into tongues. That's what Apostle Paul said. Apostle Paul said, what will I do then? He said, I, I, will, I will pray in the Spirit and I will pray in understanding. He said, I will sing in the Spirit and I will sing in understanding. So he, he was used to worshipping in the Spirit because sometimes you don't know what. Just a satalia tezeni. And you begin to sing in, and it has a deeper connection than any English. Somebody get what I'm saying? He said, what will I do then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray in the understanding also. He said, I will sing in the Spirit. I will sing in the Spirit. Let me show you some more. Some more examples of this. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 to 17. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 to 17. Look at this. DJ, come on. He says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, he said, my spirit prayeth, my understanding is of fruitful. Next verse. It says, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray in the sound of the I will sing the Spirit. And I will sing the sound of the Next verse. It says, else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall them that occupy the, 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 the room of the online say amen at the guy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? Okay? Next verse. It says, for thou verily givest thanks what? Well. They are saying, what he was saying is this, that if you are praying over a meal where there are people there, or you are praying in an event where there are non-Christians there, speaking in tongues there doesn't count because they don't understand what you're saying. But they are saying that, but you have given thanks well. Because there are some parts of giving thanks between you and God, words can't express. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You know, nobody knows where you are coming from. Nobody knows what God has delivered you from. <laughs> Hallelujah. Words are not enough. Sometimes you just need to tune into the Spirit. Let me show you one more. For, uh, Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, verse 43, um, verse, verse 45 and 46. Acts 10. This was where um, Cornelius sent for Peter. Peter um, preached to them. They got saved and the Holy Ghost came on all of them. They began to pray in tongues and see what happened. It says, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Next verse. It says, uh, it says, for they heard them do what? Speak with tongues and do what? Magnify God. They were magnifying God as they were praying in tongues. They were magnifying God. Effective prayer happens when you pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Effective prayer. Effective prayer. Ne number two, I'm trying to manage my time as much as I can. Number two, praying in tongues edifies you. It edifies you. First Corinthians 14, verse 4. First Corinthians 14, verse 4. 
it edifies you. DJ, come on, quickly. What's happening? It says, he that what? Speaketh in an unknown tongue. Does what? Edifieth himself. Now, I, you, you say, what's the meaning of the word edify? Great. The original Greek word for edify yourself means to charge up yourself. They say it's literally the word that means to charge up yourself like a battery. The way a battery charges up a phone, charges up a car. They say that's how it is. When you pray in tongues, you charge up your spiritual life. When you see some Christians cold, they don't pray in tongues. It's either they've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or even if they've received, it has been long, they pray in tongues. If we, we can tell when you don't pray. We can tell because you are very cold. Even the way you are coming to church late. <laughs> A Christian on fire won't be coming late. He's eager to be amongst other believers. He's eager to be in the presence of God. Hey, you just you, stroll. They know you're tired. Cold. Weak. Uh, no matter what they do in church, you don't respond. Say, yeah, but let's jump and shout. You just sit down. Raise your hand. You are not praying in tongues. I can tell. You are not charged up. You, praying in tongues charges you up. There are too many things depressing people in this life. Do you know sometimes the depression, nothing has even gone wrong. You are, you are just in a mood. Does it happen to anybody here? Nothing is wrong. You, are just, you don't know why you are in the mood. You're just tired of life. That's how this world is. So God gave you a device. Gave you an equipment. That anytime you are feeling down, you can charge yourself up. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait to come to church. Wherever you are, you can just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And charge yourself. Whoever prays in tongues edifies himself. You can charge yourself up. You can charge yourself up. You, I mean, the Bible says in Acts of the Apostles, they prayed so much that the building began to shake. How can a physical building shake? It's not even a tent like this. A real block building. If you've ever been to Israel, their buildings are rock. Not just this, our own block. They are rock. And they prayed to the point that the buildings began to shake. If physical building is shaking, how can problem not shake? How can poverty not shake? Are you here, somebody? How can you always be in the, in the mood? Your husband is tired of you. Because every day you are just in the mood. What's wrong? Nothing. And you squeeze face like uh, Lylon, the one who threw away. Just squeeze face in one corner. Say, what's wrong? Nothing. And your face is like a masquerade. You need to pray in tongues, sister. You need to pray in tongues when you are cooking. You can be praying in tongues. Man, they both so kabbal. There's no way that food don't be sweet. Me leke boro so to kabaya. Leke deri kababolo bolo bolo sakada. He can't have a person in magi magi lana bobo bolo so to baladika. Hallelujah. You put it in there. Glory to God. It must be sweet. Charge up yourself. Stop walking about depressed. Stop feeling like the whole world is about to come to an end. What is happening to you that you are shaking? The Bible says there's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. You are not praying in tongues. That's why you are depressed. No tongue-talking believer that is actively tongue-talking can be depressed. It's not possible. You charge yourself. You charge yourself up. I like the way Jude 20 puts it. Jude 20 says, um, 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 um. did you bring it up? It says praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. Praying in the spirit. Look at it. He said, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on what? Your most holy faith. Praying what? In the Holy Ghost. Building up your faith. Building up your faith. Some people of you, you have no faith. To, you, you, you're worried if you ever marry. Eh, you have built up your faith. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Build up your faith. You're worried if, if you ever get a job. Build up your faith. You're worried will I ever make it? Build up your faith. Will I get this admission? Build up your faith. Will I ever get healed? Build up your faith. The reason why you are in doubt is because you've not built up your faith. When you build up your faith, even though circumstances have not physically changed, but you, you are changed. Ah, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You, you are changed. You are no more depressed. You are no more discouraged. You are no more down. You know that something is going to happen. It might not have happened, but it's going to happen. It might not happen, but you know we are going to win. Are you here, somebody? We're going to win. 
Building up yourself in your most holy faith. One translation says, building up yourself higher and higher like an edifice. Ah, did you hear that? He said, one time he said, when you are praying to that Jew 20, that you are building yourself higher and higher like an edifice. Have you seen an edifice before? It's like a very tall building. They are saying, when you are praying in tongues, even though you were down before, you begin to rise higher and higher. Like you become a spiritual giant. That means the problems that look bigger than you before. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you, you will grow bigger than them. Hallelujah. You used to look up at the problem, but when you grow and pray in the Holy Ghost, you will start looking down at them. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Anytime depression wants to jump on you, just pray. See, don't wait to feel like, you see, start, just start praying. And start praying, the feeling will join you. Feeling obey you, don't obey feelings. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Any Christian that has not grown, you'll find out that they are always following their feelings because they've not mastered the art of praying in tongues. In fact, that, that takes me to my next point. That's my next point. Praying in tongues helps you become more yielded to your spirit. So that's even my next point. Praying in tongues helps you become more yielded to the spirit. Now, let me just say this, guys. Your real battle as a Christian is not between God and Satan. That one is not a battle. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because many people equate God and Satan as word and opposite. It's an insult. To say God and Satan are fighting or they are equal because God created Satan. He created him as an angel. Do you understand? So one is a creation. The other one is the creator. They are not made. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. They are not made. So your real battle as a Christian is not your village. It's not the economy. The real battle as a believer is between your flesh and your spirit. That's the real battle. Everything God is going to do for you, he has already done it. All you need is for your spirit to catch it. It already exists. Your husband, they're not going to create him now. It's already existing. Your job, they're not going to create a company for you now. It's already, everything you need is already on ground. The real battle is between how you feel and what your spirit knows. So, when you're depressed and down, you are living by your feeling. Because you feel depressed. You feel down. You feel weak. What you need to do is to master the art of doing what you need to do in spite of how you feel. And the moment you start doing it, your feeling will join you. But many people yield more to their feelings. They yield more to their feelings. When you see people that want to break a marriage, they are yielding to their feelings. I don't love you anymore. <laughs> There's no such thing. That's a feeling. You don't feel like you love them. It's a feeling. And you are, you are subjecting yourself to that feeling. But praying in tongues does something for you. Because the Bible says when you pray in tongues, your understanding is unfruitful, your spirit prayers. What that means is that when you pray in tongues, you are exercising your spirit man as opposed to exercising your feelings. So you are becoming more sensitive to your spirits than to your feelings. You become more yielded to God. You become more yielded. Some of you wonder why you can't hear God, why you can't be led by God. It's simple. You are too yielded to your flesh. When you are praying in tongues, it helps you yield to your spirit. Hallelujah. That takes me to my next point. I'm just trying to rush them so that I will put all of them into this service. The next point, praying in tongues gives you access to mysteries. Gives you access to what? Mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. Oh, there's so much about your life. I wish, I wish I can, I wish you can understand what I'm saying. There's so much. Let me tap your elbow and say, there's so much about your life. Wow, there's so much. Can, I, mean, I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine if I never heard God about doing ministry? That means this service will not be holding today. And some of you think, oh, what's gonna be is gonna be. You know, some people think like that. That God can do anything. You are joking. There are many, many ministries that have died. Many, many dreams that never came through because the person assigned to it never took it up. So don't sit there and say, oh, God will do it anyhow. You're joking. You don't know him. You don't know God. Go and read in the Bible. There are many people that, Samson, do you think that was how they planned Samson to die? Samson had many things. God aligned that he would do. Delilah ended it on her lap. Samson International Ministry. All the headquarters, all the buildings they should have had, all the staff, all the staff boss, everything. Samson International Ministries. 
S I M. It died on Delilah's lap. So there are many people that think, oh, there, there are things about your life that you might never fulfill and you reach heaven and God will show you that this is all I wanted you to do, but you didn't touch it. You were too busy being depressed, too busy gossiping, too busy watching Telemundo. Because every time you are spending doing something wrong, there's opportunity cost. You are losing something. Please don't miss the midweek service on time. We're going to round it up this Wednesday. Don't miss it so you can be wiser. There's no, there's no free time. Every time you are spending on one thing, you are losing time on another thing. Some of you, the time you have used to date somebody, somebody have used that time to get BSc. Because you dated somebody for four years, he didn't still marry you. And that was four years of dedication. You were doing homework, doing assignments, attending lecture on the things he likes and the way he likes it. See, you don't like the way you laugh. I don't like your hair. I don't like your eyebrow. Change his color. You are doing lecture four years and he still didn't marry you. Your mates have gotten BSc in that same time. And are rich enough to buy a husband. <laughs> Somebody get what I'm saying, sir? So, yielding, so, so, mysteries, there are mysteries about your life. What is a mystery? A mystery is a truth that is not yet known. So, what I'm saying is that there are, there's so much about your destiny that you don't know now. And the only way you can access it is when you pray in the spirit. Let's see this. Let's see the scripture. DJ, come on. He said, um, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto what? Man. But unto what? God. For what? No man understandeth him. Because some people, when I deal with misconception next week, I'll deal with that. Some people say, oh, what you're saying, nobody understands. Exactly. That's what the Bible says. It's not, you're not speaking to men. When you're praying to you're not speaking to men. You're speaking to God. God understands it. DJ, come on. It says, it says um, we're speaking not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he does what? Speak at mysteries. Mystery means unknown truths, undiscovered truths. So when you're praying about your life, the best way to pray is to pray in tongues. Because when you're praying in English, some of you are praying off-key. If you, if you have been here and you're a human being, you've probably prayed off-key a lot in your life. You're praying, oh God, I want admission to you. Like God is saying you can't go to you. Like God, they will kill you in court there. So you can, must never go. Say, so God, make me sure I enter you. Like I bind the VC. I bind the gate man. I bind the prayer. God say you can't go. Somebody get what I'm saying? But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, mysteries about your life is being revealed. You find your heart moving away from there, moving to something else. God is saying, this way I'm pointing you to not there. So you are praying mysteries, and those mysteries now come to your understanding for you to know what God is saying. A lot of times, when I, when I, when I don't have direction, I pray in tongues about something enough until one day, I'll just be sitting there somewhere, it will just drop. What I've been praying in tongues will just drop in my spirit. That this is what I was trying to tell you. But you see, if you don't pray in tongues like that, you will be full of your own ideas. And those ideas come from human advice. That, ah, Zenith Bank is better than Union Bank. That's human ideas. You don't know what can change in six months. One can acquire one in six months and you lose your job. You know, most people are not going to work. The people on top, they are the ones that know the true state of things. So you can't depend on just a human advice. Say, take that job. Go for banking instead of uh, go for uh, IT. Meanwhile, IT will soon overtake banking in the next five years. Then you will not be looking for employment under IT people that you would have started with. But you didn't know then. You stopped banking. It's the only way because it's raining now. This is how many Christians live their life without, 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 without access to higher information. I'm praying in tongues the only way you can know what God, mysteries, unknown truth, unrevealed truth. Somebody get what I'm saying? So always, always pray in tongues about your destiny. Don't always come to God and tell him what you want. God, this is what I want. He says, mm, cool down. You will only pray like that when by the Spirit he has inspired you to claim it. If not, you are claiming rubbish. So if you want to travel by force, God is saying, your destiny is here. He says, oh God, Canada. Canada. Da, 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 da. Canada. Da, 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 Toronto. Do, 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 do. Canada. Da, Toronto. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Kagar. Kagar. Winning. Pe, 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 pe. Toronto to Canada. Da, 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 da. <laughs> God will say, calm down. You'll be traveling for vacation, but not to go and live there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, stay here. I want to use you here. There are businesses you can set up. Haven't you noticed the real big guys that can even buy Canada? They've not moved to Canada. You don't know? If we were by moving, we don't go to be living here. We are told they will all be living. They can buy like one town in Canada. But they know there's action here. This is where the action is. I'm not saying you should not travel to Canada. But I'm just saying, pray. Don't just jump. Everybody's going, woo, everybody's going, woo. Everybody in my street has gone, woo, woo. 
You just join them. <laughs> and be suffering for nothing there. And be lost there. I told you there's opportunity cost. See, sometimes you can actually even have a better life in terms of bread and butter. But you might have a lesser life in terms of destiny. At the end of the day, when you've been before God, it's not bread and butter they will measure. They will say, what of the assignment? Like, what of your SIM? Your Samson International Ministry. You, own, you, you killed it in Toronto. By going to flip burger. To eat. Somebody get what I'm saying? Mysteries. Praying mysteries. So you're about to make an important decision. Praying the Holy Spirit. A boy is toasting you. He's chatting with you every night. Praying the Holy Ghost. Look, I tell you, I tell you, time waster. Don't even answer him. Block him. Come in of you. Some men have wasted your time, wasted your emotion, broken your heart, broken your phone, broken everything. Because he chat with you, chat with you every night. Chat with you. Hello, baby. Hello, love. Hello, sweetie. Hello, king. Pumpkin, hello, just anything. He has confused you, confused you. Chat you, you are chatting diligently. <laughs> Only after six years, he now send you his wedding ivy. <laughs> Somebody's married. Some of you know you have been through this whole rubbish. If you pray in the Holy Ghost on time, you can know if it's a time waster. You won't put your emotion there. If they give money for every time a girl, a girl's time has been wasted, many girls will be billionaires. Time waster back to back. You have even now confused. You are now trying to hold three or four of them together. And they all jointly still waste your time. Pumpkin. Hello, love. Hello, my pa- Early morning, their chat all wakes you up. Boom, boom. Hello, lovely. <laughs> I'm about to waste your destiny. Now, can you leave your work and chat with me? And I will give you high hopes. I promise to dash your hope at the end. But you, do, you don't want to pray. You just want to do everything naturally. Just, there are many business things you are pursuing that is a waste of time. Nothing is going to come out of it. You are busy printing commercial car, printing letterhead, renting office. God said nothing is going to come out of this thing. You should have prayed about it before you move. When you pray in the Holy Ghost like that, you become sensitive and the Holy Ghost can tell you ahead if you should pray. You, you know whether you have peace or not. Because people don't know. Say, God has never led me. It's simple. You don't pray in tongues. Because God doesn't speak to your flesh. He speaks to your spirit. So you need to get your spirit to be active in praying in tongues. Then God can talk to you. God speaks to your spirit. Those that relate with God must do so in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Don't forget that. And praying in tongues is the only way you pray in the spirit. Every other way you are praying those natural prayers. Praying in tongues is the only way you pray. That's what they call it, praying in the spirit. Number what? I have to rush. Hmm. Number five, praying in tongues gives us access to our spiritual gifts. Do you know you have spiritual gifts? Let me tap your neighbor for me. Tell him, Oga. Don't be afraid. What is, what is female version of Oga? Good. So whoever is sat by you, know what to use. Oga, madam. <laughs> Depending on who is here. You have spiritual gifts. See, even if you are here and you are a prostitute, hmm? you have spiritual gifts. All of us came with them from heaven when we came. Even if you are here and you are a Yahoo boy, you have spiritual gifts. I'm not talking about natural gifts. I'm talking about spiritual gifts. Not natural gifts. Not natural gifts. Of course, you have natural gifts too as a human being. But I'm talking now about your spiritual gifts. There are nine spiritual gifts mentioned in the Bible. I don't have time to read all that. Let's see something here. Acts chapter 19. Acts 19. Verse 1 to 6. We read this last week. DJ, you have to fast so My time is already... And it came to pass that while uh, Paul was in, Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passing through the coast of Ephesus, finding certain disciples. Next verse, quickly. He said, and he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, ah, we didn't even know there was anything called the Holy Ghost. Next verse. He says, ah, and he said unto them, unto what were you baptized? He said, ah, it's John baptism we are still using. Next verse, he shouted, yay. Paul said, very little John. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Paul said, ah, John very baptized the baptism of repentance. Saying unto the people, because he was sad. No, Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. So Paul knew the power of praying in tongues. So when he was shocked when he met Christians that were not praying in tongues. He, was, ah! he said, Paul, Paul, John baptized you, repent, and saying unto the people that they should believe on him, who should come after, that is on Jesus Christ. Next verse. He said, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Next verse. He said, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, what happened? The Holy Ghost came on them, and what happened? They spoke with tongues, and what happened? They prophesied. These guys had the gift of prophecy, if they never were baptized with the Holy Ghost with praying in tongues, that gift would never have been realized. I don't know what you are going to die with that is a gift. 
and you will get to heaven, God will say, my sister, you were, a prof- you were a prophet or you had the gift of prophecy or you had the gift of discernment of spirit or you had the gift of um, faith or you have the other sort of gifts. God said, you had it. I gave you those gifts, but you never tapped into it. Praying in tongues gives you access to your spiritual gifts. They don't, because those gifts are spiritual gifts. They need your spirit to be activated for them to flow. That's why everything for you as a believer is in the spirit. So if you don't pray in tongues, you never, you're just a natural. These guys were, had the gift of prophecy. They had the gift of prophecy. They could have lived better with their lives. They could have known plans of God ahead, but they never used it. They, were, they had only John's baptism. My brother, just sit down. I'll have to finish my series. <laughs> They're telling me about my time. Okay, let me rush. So, you have spiritual gifts. It's just pending me. Many of you have spiritual gifts. I wish you can know. I wish you can know. You, you are loaded. Many of you think, oh, ministry is until I stand here to preach. No. There are so many things you can do where you are. You have spiritual gifts. You can't wait till you come out. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still around. For a long time. So, forget that one. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, but you have a platform too where you are. That, that your office, that your business, those your colleagues, your neighborhood, you are sent to that street. You are sent to that office. Look, there are things you can tell your boss. That your boss is always boning. That if God just speaks to you and just tell him, hey, okay, um, don't put your child in, in, in the second school you want to put your child. That first school that they say there's no space, they will call you back that there's space. So don't waste your money on this one. Ah, and your God that you never even discussed with you about that you was trying to put his children in school, he will respect you from that day. I swear when the prophecy comes to pass. From that day, anytime you want to do something, you say, come, my brother, come. I'm thinking of... <laughs> you will move to my brother. You become his brother. My brother, I'm thinking of uh, buying something. I don't know which one you think we should. Come and pray. Let's think about it. You will get respect. But you're waiting till, you're waiting till they give you stage here. You are sent to your office. You are sent to your street. There are people on your street. You are men of God will give you a word for. And you go and tell them, look, God is saying this thing. I don't know why. But God is saying that boy you want to marry is a time waster. Or that boy is this. Or that boy is married. Or you just tell somebody, hey, ask that your boyfriend if he knows any, any tetemi tokwe. <laughs> and truly, she will, in your presence, there, pick up her phone and call her boyfriend and say, who is tetemi tokwe? And you hear the guy stammering in the background. <laughs> and you'll be standing there, you'll tell her, ask him what's happening on August 15th. He said, uh, 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 uh. That's the date of introduction with Temita. If you tell that girl now, we have a program in church, come. She, she will argue. But you are busy just watching Telemundo. And see world. <laughs> are you here, somebody? You have spiritual gifts. Tap your neighbor say, You have spiritual gifts. There are nine spiritual gifts in the body. It's in the Bible. I don't have time to read it. Number what? Number six. <sighs> I've finished my time already. Praying in tongues helps to build character. I'm going to rush the two. Praying in tongues helps to build character. You're wondering why you are a carnal Christian. Since you give a lot to Christ, everything is a struggle. You can't pray. You can't live a holy life. You can't go to church. You can't read your Bible. You can't do anything. You are struggling. It's very simple because you don't pray in tongues. Because praying in tongues activates your power in the spirit. It activates it. Peter was a very erratic person. Was a weakling. Peter denied Jesus three times before the cock road one night. Three times, even in front of a house girl, small girl. Three times. But when the Holy Ghost came, that same Peter, the Bible says he stood boldly and preached. You see it in Acts chapter 2, verse 13. He said he stood boldly and preached. And in verse 41, they said 3,000 people gave their lives. I don't know how many people were in the crowd. If 3,000 gave their lives, then that crowd must have been up to 5,000 or more. And Peter was bold to declare Jesus. Before that, he was shy to talk about Jesus. You are here, you have never preached before. Goli goes to say sometimes, preach in the bus. Preach to your colleague. And you don't have the power to preach. It's very simple. You need to start praying in tongues. Because the power to witness comes when you pray in tongues. He said, tarry here in Jerusalem until you be endued with power and you become witnesses. Your Christianity is powerless when you are prayerless. If you don't pray in tongues, you will never have power to represent the kingdom. You will, your character will never be formed. 
Peter went from being a weakling to being a strong person by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It helps your character. Many people think I have to be holy before I pray in tongues. No, you have to pray in tongues to be holy. It helps to build your spiritual strength. Your struggle with sin will reduce and fade when you pray often in tongues. Because where you get strength over sin is in your spirit and not in your flesh. Your flesh never gets born again. All you do to your flesh is to put it under. And you need a strong spirit to put your flesh under. Have you been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.